Welcome to room nine, the region's largest classroom. I am Mrs. Wright and I teach at Monroe Elementary in St. Charles. Today, I will be teaching a reading lesson meant for second graders, but as always, everyone is welcome to learn with us. I hope, don't mind me fixing my hair, that you are in your jammies because we are having another poetry party. Whoop, whoop because there are so many awesome things to learn about poetry, duh, right? And uh, we have been reading this book this week at the Sea Ocean Floor, and it's very interesting. Um, so we're going to keep working on this this week. Um, guys, my hair is a mess, and it's kind of driving me nuts. Oh, man. Okay, we are going to keep working on this this week. I guess I've probably never worn my glasses on here before because they're driving me crazy. Probably never worn glasses and a headband at the same time. It was a poor choice, wasn't it? But you gotta do what you gotta do for your jammy party. I had to go all in with the theme. My glasses, my robe, my hair's a mess, my little head things that I wear to keep my hair back. I just, if you have a theme, you have to go for it, right? Yeah. Anyways, I you remember what I was saying, but <sighs> I hope you're doing well. Um, I'm doing well. We learned about free verse this week. Um, I am really excited for what we're going to learn about today because I specifically remember, I'm already doing my stretches, learning about this type of poetry when I was in school and I really really enjoyed it and like I told you I am going to be writing this live with you so it might be a little rough but I'm just gonna live through it and it's gonna be fine because it's good to show you the thought process behind how to write poems okay so let's do some more stretching some deep breaths maybe I can get Molly down here oh Molly! Oh, oh, oh. It's kind of a nice uh, cloudy day today. Oh man. Oh, oh. feels good. Okay. So, um, deep breaths. Here we go. Okay. Today, this is like my favorite type of poetry. We are going to learn about a haiku. A, a haiku is a short form poetry that originated in Japan. It's super, super quick. And usually, but not always, the poem is about something with nature. And there are three lines in the poem, and there's 17 syllables total in all three of the lines. But each line has a set number of syllables. So it's five, seven, five. So the first line has five syllables, the second line has seven syllables, the last line has five syllables. So five, seven, and five. Okay, so haiku. That's what we're learning about. It's short form poetry. I'm gonna move this up so it's a little bit easier to see. So, I'm excited for this because I just specifically remember reading haikus and I love them. So, healthy eating, here we go. Now, remember, syllables are like the breaks in words. So, patient reef shark waits. A cleaner wrasse dances in. What's for breakfast? Hmm. The cleaner wrasse ti eats tiny blood-sucking parasites that cling. Oh, obviously this isn't the poem anymore. I'm reading about this um, cleaner wrasse. Uh, ace? Hopefully I'm saying it right. No, I think it's wrasse. Parasites that cling to the skin, mouths, and gills of larger reef fish, rays, and sharks 
Cleaners are busiest in the morning when parasites swarm out of the reefs and hop onto host fish. Large fish line up, open their mouths, and spread their gills so cleaners can dart in and use their pincher-like teeth to pick off the pesky invaders. The cleaner wrasse does a bobbing dance and touches the shark with its fins so the shark will relax for a cleaning, not make a quick meal of the cleaner. Hmm. So, patient reef shark waits. A cleaner wrasse dances in. What's for breakfast? So let's check the syllables. Should be five, seven, five. So here we go. Patient, that's two. Reef, shark waits. That's five, right? Patient, reef, shark waits. Five syllables. Hi, do you want to say hi? Come up here. Right here? No? Okay. Do you want to say hi? Here, come here. You're tired. Okay. A cleaner, a cleaner, wrasse dances in. I say, I'm saying it right. A cleaner, wrasse dances in. Woo, woo. That's seven. Now there should be five. What's for, what's for breakfast? Hmm. What's, what's for breakfast? What? What is, hmm, what's, what's for br breakfast? Maybe the what's counts as two. What's for breakfast? That would be five. Okay. All right. So, haikus. Three lines, 17 syllables all together. Five in the first line. Second line is seven. Five in the last line. Healthy eating was the poem. Patient shark grief waits. A cleaner wrasse dances in. What's for breakfast? Okay, we are going to write a poem dun, 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 about fall. Because normally, they don't have to be, but normally haikus are about nature. So we're going to write a poem about fall. You can write along with me. Maybe you want to write your own. Okay, five syllables. Here we go. Leaves. Leaves is one syllable. Leaves change colors. Leaves change color. Colors. Leaves change colors fast. Leaves. Leaves change colors fast. That's five, good, okay, write it down. Leaves change colors, oops, I spelled colors wrong, fast, oops. Guys, I am a mess. I think I'm nervous to do this alive. Fall, here we go. Leaves, do they change fast or slow? I think it's fast. They fall fast. Leaves change colors. I can't say slowly. Leaves change colors slow. It's slow. Okay. Fall fast from the trees. Falling quickly from the trees. There we go. Leaves can change color slow. Falling quickly from the trees. Falling quickly from the trees. Rake them up and jump. Look at that five. Rake them up and jump. <laughs> Rake. Guys, I'm so happy. This is why I like this type. Rake them up and jump. Okay, let's clap it out. Are you ready? Here, I'm gonna, it's gonna seem very silly, but I'm gonna do it because I love you guys and I want to be able to use my hands and hold this up at the same time. Okay, fall, here we go. Leaves change color slow. Leaves change color slow. Beautiful. 
Falling quickly from the trees. Falling quickly from the trees. <laughs> Rake them up and jump. Oops, I did the and sign. Rake them up and jump. Ah, we did it! Okay, leaves change color slow. Falling quickly from the trees. Rake them up and jump. Woo, a poem about fall. I love it. Oh, I'm so happy. Way to go us. We did it. Okay, now we're going to learn about another type of poem that is very similar to a haiku. More syllable stuff. And it's by, um, it was developed, it's a sin, sin quain. Sinquain, and it was developed by an American poet who studied haikus, and each line has a specific syllable count. Two, four, six, eight, two. The title should add to the poem's meaning, and it's usually written about nature. Okay? So, Sinquain is very similar to a haiku, except that it is two, four, six, eight, two on the lines of the syllables. So maybe a little more challenging, I guess we'll find out. Okay, we have in this book, Crabby Camouflage. Crabby Camouflage, so it should be two syllables, four, six, eight, and two. Okay, this will be hilarious because these words. A jeweled anemone, there we go. Ooh, crab is a hermit crab that protects its soft body by moving into an empty snail shell. The crab camouflages its borrowed home by sticking colorful living sea anem anem anemones, there we go, on the outside of the shell. Anemones disguise the shell and can also sting and stun. Predators that come too close to the crab. Ouch. Okay, here we go. Stalk eyed, hermit defends each second hand shell home with anemone jewelry. Stunning. Okay, let's check it. Should be two. Stalk eyed, stalk eyed, that's two. Hermit defends, that's four. Each Second hand, each second hand shell home. Each second hand shell home. Six with anemone with anemone jewelry with anemone anemone jewelry with an Emony with an emony. Oh, there we go. Stunning. Two. Woo. Got it. Okay. So another poem. It's about the jeweled and e emony an emony crab. Man, I hope I'm really saying these right. I'm using my word solving strategies. Okay. So it followed the two four six eight two. The title. Crabby camouflage. It worked with it, right? Because it's a crab that's trying to hide um, like a jewel. And it was about nature. And it followed the five lines and the rules of 24682. Okay, now we are going to write another poem. And we're going to write it about Thanksgiving. What do you think about that? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Oh, okay. I probably shouldn't have written the title on yet because the title is supposed to give it meaning. So we can wait on the title if we need to. Thanksgiving. That's two syllables, right? Thanksgiving. Oh, man. Okay, what can we say about Thanksgiving, guys? Hmm. Hmm, what do you think? Food, family, that's good. Family, oh, that's how we could start. Well, family, you might just have your friends. 
family, friends. That Maybe it could start with family. F family, that's two. Friends is one. Family. Um, four. Eat yummy food. <laughs> there we go. Eat yummy food. Eat yummy food, six syllables. Family, that's two. Eat yummy food. Uh, give thanks for each other. Yes. Give. I'm having some good luck. Thanks for each other. Eight, give thanks for each other, other, yeah. Okay, eight. Friend, friends, 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 no, friends can be family too. Celebrate, celebrate friends too. Hmm, this is, oh, celebrate, oh, it's supposed to be like a line. Hmm. Give, eat yummy food. Friends are like family too. That's six, give thanks for each other. Um, your friends are like family too. That was the same amount. How is that possible? Huh, guys, come on. Eat yummy food. Give thanks for each other. Hmm. Eight syllables. That has to do with Thanksgiving. Oh, turkey makes, turkey makes you sleep all day. Oh, long. Turkey makes you sleep all day long. Yes, turkey makes you sleep all day long. It's supposed to be one line, but I ran out of room. Whoops. So one line, two lines, three lines, Four lines, okay, fifth line, two syllables, friends. Friends too, oh, there we go. Look at that, woo, -hoo! I love poetry. Do you see why I fell in love with haikus? They're fun. Okay, here we go. Let's check. This should have two. Family, eat. Yummy food. Yes. Give thanks for each other. Yes. Turkey makes you sleep all day long. Yes. Friends too. Woo! We did it. We did it. We did it. Okay. So today we learned about a haiku in a sinquain, and they are super fun to write, counting the syllables. Um, so you are welcome to try writing both of those today. I thought it would be fun to finish reading with a book today. I just really love books and for some reason these fairy tales, they're just fun. Uh, so let's read about it. This is being read with permission also from Peachtree Publishing. And this is called Little Red. I really love the pictures on this book. Little Red by Bethan Wolven. So pretty. One day, Little Red's mother called to her. Please take some cake to your grandma, she said. She's not feeling too well. So Little Red set off on her journey through the forest to Grandma's house. 
and the pictures meet. Before long, she met a wolf. Where are you going? He growled, which might have scared some little girls, but not this little girl. To my grandma's, Little Red replied. She's not feeling well. Is that right? Asked the wolf. And he made a plan. Uh-oh. Look at his teeth. He's, she's only using like grays, black, white, and red. It's really cool. And red is because it's called Little Red, right? The wolf said goodbye to Little Red, took a shortcut through the trees, and found Grandma's house. Which was unlucky for Grandma. What did he do? He ate Grandma. He put on her glasses and spare nightdress and climbed into her bed. And there he waited. It wasn't long before Little Red arrived and found that the door to Grandma's house was already open. She peeped through the window. She couldn't see Grandma, but she could see a badly disguised wolf waiting in Grandma's bed, which might have scared some little girls, but not this little girl. She made a plan and went inside. I wonder what her plan is. Hmm. Hello, Grandma, Little Red said, though she wasn't fooled for a minute. Oh, Grandma, what big ears you have, she said. Oh, gr big, oh Grandma, what big eyes you have, she said. And oh, Grandma, what big teeth you have, she said. Why, yes, my dear, replied the wolf. All the better. To eat you with. And the wolf leaped forward, which might have scared some little girls. She's an axe in her hand. Look at this picture. But not this little girl, which was unlucky for the wolf. Hmm. Look. She has the wolf's hair on, and there's Grandma in the house back there. So she must have used that axe to protect herself and save her Grandma, right? Little Red. It's a good book. All right, friends. That is it for today. I loved ending it with this. My challenge to you is to go ahead and uh, try and write some poetry today. You are so good at it and I am really proud of you and I hope that you have a great rest of your week. I will see you next time. Bye. Teaching in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.